Hi friends, welcome back to the Sanctuary Garden. It is officially the beginning of August and the garden is wild, as you can see. The cucumber arch trellis is officially touching at the top. Mwah! And I have been getting cucumbers like crazy. Let's see if we have it in here today. And this is the silver slicer cucumber. Wow. Yeah, I'd say we got some to harvest today. Let's see, one, two, three. Wow. Four, five, six. Seven. I'm like officially at the point where the more I harvest, the more I'm getting. So I just kind of just started going for it. And down here, you could tell it's getting a little sickly. I need to come in here and trim some of that up. And I've already harvested a lot of cucumbers from down there. So that's probably also why. Um, we're getting a little bit of a deformed one up here. I think it'll still be okay. Um, but that's because we have been in the 90s, uh, like the last week or two. It's been insane. And um, that's Fahrenheit. Let's check over here. Wow. Look at you. That is a big one. We'll get that one today. So many more flowers coming. What a blessing. And yeah, just even more in here. I love silver saucer cucumbers. I think uh, moving forward, these are always going to be something I always grow in my garden. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead. Let's just go ahead and take this one right now. And I am very much someone who, when the garden hits its peak and I've got all these precious cucumbers and tomatoes just ripening, I just want to leave them on there as long as possible. Like, I like to see them get big. I like to see this be full. And I just want time to, like, pause. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> and I know it's not possible. I know it's not good for the plant to keep things on there when they're getting really big. And it might affect my harvest. But, like, I don't know. I just wish time could freeze a little bit at the peak of summer. But at least we get to share in it today. It gets to freeze a little bit with this video. And then on the other side of the trellis, we have the market more cucumbers, which are the green. These aren't growing as prolifically as the silver slicer, but they're growing pretty well. I've already taken, these are actually getting bigger than my silver slicer, huge. I've had one that was a pound and one that was two pounds so far, my biggest. I love that I did two cucumbers on both sides this year. They're just filling out the same. And funny enough, this side has one silver slicer plant. This side has two market more cucumbers. And if we look at it, you can tell that this one is a little bigger. And that's because I think it has more root space to get bigger and get wider. And it's actually making the plant be bigger and put off more to have one less plant there than to have two. Super interesting little test. And I can see now that doing just one is good enough. Strawberries are still holding tight. I had a lot die off. It took about a week and now we are getting new flowers and new growth. I cut off all the old ones once they like really die out and cut off any old leaves that seem to be not doing well and it seems to work. New berries seem to come back. This one's not so great. Oh no, I picked off the flowers too. Okay, okay, I'll do better next time. That's okay, maybe we'll get more flowers because I did that. So far, strawberry care is pretty easy. You just have to keep up with it. Um, I did give it some fish emulsion maybe two weeks ago, so it's doing its thing. It's doing pretty well. And they are getting shaded out a lot by the cucumber, so I do come in here and cut some big leaves out that were covering it just to give it its its best sunlight. That one's looking pretty good. It looks healthy. Maybe, maybe one more day. The zinnias. Oh, look at this. She's gorgeous. So thick, so full. Wow. I think that is the biggest, bushiest one I've had so far with all those petals. All the other ones have looked somewhat but more like this, a little bit in between. Tiny, teeny, tiny flower in there. It's for the smallest of pollinators. Holy moly. So delicate. And each one's different. Each one is individually different. It's wild. And we'll come around to the inside of the bed to get a better look. 
Got the orange ones in here. They were all loving life, doing pretty well. Now they're not, they're getting a lot less sun here due to, look at this one. Oh, I love this one. Wow, so different, like I said. This one's got many random flowers in the middle and different color petals and the bees are loving it. I'm just seeing a moment of silence for that one. <laughs> and then we got some more pink down here bushing out together. There's two different plants in there. Um, but yeah, zinnias are going pretty well this year. Last year, my zinnias at this point were like up to here. They were growing in line with the cucumber as the cucumber was going up the vine. They were at the same height. And so these are significantly lower. They're not as bushy and big as I thought they would be. And I'm not sure exactly why that is. There are of course a couple factors at play. I don't think my soil was as quality at the beginning of this year as it was last year. Also my starts last year, they all were from seed. This one, all of them were from the store except one. And that one's the tallest one here looking at it, but it's kind of leggy, tall, not really tall, healthy. But yeah, so then that could also be a factor that they were store-bought. Maybe they're just not the same variety. I put all of my plants in like a week or two later than I did last year. Last year, we were so hot in two weeks of May. Everything kind of took off as soon as I planted them in. So I'm thinking that that could have been a factor too. Why these zinnias just aren't as big, wild, and beautiful. Well, everything's just a little wonky this year in terms of like growth and the sun and the weather. I'm not mad about it. Like the zinnias look gorgeous. If they can hold through and not get too leggy before the cucumbers start to die out, when I rip off the cucumbers off the trellis, these might really start to take off. Ooh, maybe they'll be like my peak joy in the fall. Be in my fall garden, they'll be like the best and they'll be able to have the whole bed to themselves. I have no idea. I normally like to leave my tomatoes pretty late too, but we'll see. And then down here, the asturtium. I am getting a lot of gorgeous flowers, but they die off so fast. You really gotta catch them when they're here. This is just one asturtium seed that really just took off and is loving life. It's covering over my chamomile, which is right down here, and got leggy and stretched out over here. My poor sweet chamomile, she's not looking too hot. She really suffered from a lot of the moisture and a lot of the rain we've been having so far this summer. She's got powdery mildew that's just taking over all the new growth too. So I'm debating just pulling them out, both of them. It's sad because they're one of my favorites, but they did good, they did good. And then daisies, they're barely getting any light covered here by the cucumber and the chamomile, but I mean, they're putting off new heads checking for um any bugs i don't see any uh so we're good on that so moving on let's get to the tomato wall holy cow these are officially out of my reach they're almost up to like this line right here and i'm kind of trying to persuade them to go over this fence that's what happened last year if we get a closer look this is like my face this is <laughs> my face level so once this little guy gets a little bit longer i'm gonna put this arm this elbow right here when he gets a little bigger maybe who knows maybe that part whatever but i'm gonna try to make it like a ceiling going down here and that way i can be able to walk through here freely especially with this big old hat and get in here my tomatoes cut some leaves off make sure it's getting wind in here but this is going to become a very shaded tunnel in no time so my first tomato on the end here is the brad's atomic grape she's beautiful look at her this is the one i thought was stunted and i thought maybe i ruined when i planted it and she is just putting on a show for us now she is thriving she loved the compliments she's like here you go here's the fruits of your labor literally and uh spiritually too i guess i don't know but wow and the ones that are getting hit by the sun the most get the darkest so these ones are like gorgeously striped dark. And the ones back here that are a little bit more new are a little light green. They haven't gotten striped yet. And I don't know if they're gonna get darker, or if they're gonna stay a little lighter because they're in the shade, but wow. Look at those, they're like grapes. I mean, they are grape tomatoes, but wow. She's got even more up here. I wanna be so gentle, but look at this. That has a handful of grape tomatoes girlfriend show out show up <laughs> i am just so proud of you oh my goodness let's move in here holy cow and we got more 
So this is just the wild, wild west. <laughs> the wild, wild west of tomatoes in here. And when they get, when it gets above this trellis mark, I do not, I don't trim unless it's hanging over and holding hands with a cucumber. Because I, this week I've had to cut off many, many stems that were leaning over and the cucumber right here would come over, hold it, and then start wrapping its tendrils around it. And they were like best friends. They were creating their own atmosphere in here. I did cut those off. Um, but otherwise, I'm letting it go wild. I like it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's in its most natural habitat, and this is what it wants to do with life. So I let it go wild. Let's move on in. Now moving into the shade here, in the little tomato, I don't even know what I should call this, tomato wall? I call it the tomato wall, but maybe we can call it like the tomato terrace or something. I don't know. When it's against that overlay, like tomato arch, tomato wonderland, tomato tunnel, maybe I'll call it the tomato tunnel. But wow, so much more shade in here. I'm looking up, I see at least like 60 tomatoes. It's insane. I mean, look, even the tomatoes are sweating. <laughs> of course, that could be moisture from last night's rain and the leaves dripping, but wow. Beautiful. Just so many. I wish I could give you like, a better shot of these, like just looking up. <gasps> Look at all of those tomatoes. They're endless. Wow. All I can say is wow. Like just living under this tomato, tomato tunnel, whatever we end up calling it, just is magnificent. It's magnificent. If I was a bird, I'd live in here. And if I was me, I'd let the bird live in here. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So. Tomatoes clearly are showing up after these cucumbers. I've been so obsessed with the cucumbers lately. I've just forgotten how exciting these tomatoes can be too. Just, wow. This is like a little paradise away from home in here, huh? And so far the plants in here, especially the starts that I was worried about, exceeded my expectations. I am just so, so proud of them and in awe of them. And before we leave, what would we be a mess to not harvest a tomato? Maybe that one's not ready yet. How about you? Yeah, you feel like you are. Should we try some of these tomatoes? I wish I had some garden salt, like a little salt shaker out here. Okay. This is the black cherry tomato. I think it'd be a little darker if it was in the sun. But wow, look at how much juice and gel and seeds are in there. So good. I think this one, so far, I haven't tried the Brides of Tom and Grape yet or the Bumblebee Sunrise, but so far this one is one of my favorite darker, robust tomatoes. I really love the Sun Sugar. I have them over there every year I get those. Those are like a fan favorite for a lightness, sweeter, kind of like a fruitier tomato. But this is like a good, darker, juicier, robust tomato. Mmm. Mm, yeah, a flavor profile I have never had in a tomato before. And the left back corner of the bed. We have some basil still looking good, shadowed out, but it's not dying off. It's just giving a home to the spiders. This chamomile is looking a little better. Came up really late, but it's also, I had to cut off a bunch because it was just rotted. So maybe I could put a steak with this one, give them some more sunlight here. And these daisies could get more sunlight um, now that they're coming back. They look healthy though. Maybe they like some shade. I don't know. They're definitely getting shaded. Um, and the zinnias, of course. But tomatoes from this side too. What? They're just like draping over the edge so beautifully and coming back up. Starstruck. I'm starstruck. And then we have the other part of the garden with the vertical tower. She's in pieces. So I came out this morning after a really big storm monsoon last night to find my tower has fallen over. Looks like almost everything's okay, except one of my pepper plants was completely chopped off. And as was two of my basils, like the roots just like beheaded. I'm gonna stick this in water and hope that maybe it'll reroot. So sad. And then these, I think I can harvest the peppers that are here. They just started ripening, but you can harvest peppers early. I'm gonna eat them, so I'm gonna harvest these off and just like say goodbye to this plant. <laughs> Cause this was like one of my best growing peppers. It's just so sad. I need to do better. I need to do better for myself and for my garden and my green stock planner. It's also like 
it's just a really good reminder that in the garden anything can happen and it's in mother nature's hands and if you have a big storm you can always do the best that you can do and put up stakes and put up nets and put up supports but at some point like what's meant to be will be and I guess what's meant to be is this so <sighs> literally we're gonna shake it off and we're gonna move on and we're gonna do what we can and move on I had one, I think this is a banana pepper that turned red that I was really excited to harvest and eat red and it's like crushed. I just got flattened, so I'm gonna cut that off and I wish I had chickens, but I don't, so I'll give them, I don't know, compost bugs, I don't know. We'll get more, maybe. Okay, the lady who was stealing the show over here now. Miss Zucchini, the queen, is finally in bloom. Her leaves are gorgeous and big and she is ready to be here. She's showing up now. I also gave her some blood meal and we have our first ever zucchini. But I don't think that that one got pollinated. So there's no male flowers open here. Yeah, but it looks cool. I came out here yesterday morning and checked on that flower for the first day that it opened. Now this female flower needs to be pollinated by that male flower that has yet to open in order to grow fruit. And this today or tomorrow, if it does not get pollinated by a zucchini male flower, it's going to close up and die off. And this little zucchini is going to die off too. I'm extra excited about this flower specifically because I had a zucchini plant last year. It got giant, got huge, and then got destroyed by a thunderstorm that just whipped it around. But on that plant, I never had a female flower, ever. Um, so this is my first female flower ever had, and it's not open at the same time as the male flower. So I'm a little disappointed, and it's a gorgeous flower. I would hand pollinate it myself if I could, but I don't have a male flower. So I'm hoping that that second one coming up will open up in time for the male flowers but if it doesn't ugh, i just wanted to document this moment and this flower because it may not become a zucchini but i love it <laughs> i love it as if it was one so so yeah kind of disappointed that the male flower wasn't going to be ready in time this flower's closed up today it had like one day of being open so i'm gonna wait and see what happened maybe it was magically pollinated i don't think so i think that one is gonna drop off also tell me how this survived the big storm and that and that fell over I mean, I know it's higher up in the sky, but like, as far as this didn't get whipped around like last year, it's just bizarre to me, but I'll take it. Sometimes I just think things happen in life and the garden that are just meant to be. I don't know why it was meant to be, but I'm just not, I'm not gonna dwell on it. I'm gonna let it be and just um, be excited about the positives, the things that didn't break and the things I still have and how the tomatoes miraculously survived off the top of that shelf falling all the way over. And we got some tomatoes in here. And man, these are so good in the sun. Let me just get this one down here. We gotta give this one a good try too. Man, that tasted like something. Something really good. <laughs> man, that's the kind of tomato that'll make you dance. Woo! doesn't even need salt. Sun sugar, by far my number one recommended tomato. I wish I kind of put that on the tomato wall over there now that it's tasting it again. Oh, so good. I wish you could taste it too if you haven't. If you have, let me know. If you haven't, next year. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for spending time in the garden with me today. I love showing you my garden, watching the progress. It's really great for me too. And I hope that your garden is going well. Thanks. See you guys next time.